Hey, what's up everybody? It's Brian here. Welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all doing great. So today's episode is going to be another Redbubble shop review. It's episode number 13. I'm really excited to get deep into these two shops so that we can look at what works, what doesn't, what needs to be improved upon, and what can be celebrated. So if you're interested in finding out what you can take away from this episode to incorporate into your own respective shop and take your business to the next level, then there's only one thing to say. Let's get to it. So the first shop that we're going to be looking at today is this shop here that we see on the screen, Smart Merch 99. And from the date that they joined in January 2022, it's roughly about six months old. So uh, with 153 designs, that's not really bad at all for, you know, a six month old shop. Um, the first thing that caught my attention when I actually looked at this shop is this banner. It's not something which is bombastic or really bright and full of products or whatnot. Basically, things that you usually advocate for. But the fact that it's really subdued it's it's you know the, this brown and this white contrast in terms of the text and the design for me at least anyways it really works um, it's sort of calming at the same time too as well and the one thing that I liked about it is that this person not only included the social media icons that he or she is actually can be contacted on but also included an email address now it's not a clickable email address which is absolutely fine people can actually go ahead and type it but it does provide a really great way for potential customers particularly if they want to you know um, get their hands on a customizable design to get in touch with the seller and actually give them their request and maybe take it to the next level with respect to going about you know creating the design that they look that they're looking for and then actually buying it through this person's shop too as well so well done for that I really I, I think that's a smart move on your part so great on you for that Okay, so let's just scroll down here. Uh, let's take a look at the artist profile. As many of you know, I'm really big on the artist profile too as well because it is one way that we are showing our potential customers that, hey, there is an actual human being behind this shop, somebody who can relate, somebody who can be communicated with, and basically to give a little bit of a nuance of what you're all about so that the customer can you know, develop some kind of trust or connection with you. Okay, so we've got here, hey, I'm a graphic and illustration designer based in Pakistan. I love creating good and exciting creative designs. Customers love to buy. If you love the designs, share with your friends and family members. Your support is very much appreciated. So there's that thank you. There's the gratitude aspect of this. If you want a custom design, feel free to contact me. And again, we've given, or rather he has given the, uh, the email address in the artist profile as well. So not a bad artist profile at all. Um... The fact that it's grammatically correct, um, I think is also a plus to you. So when people are reading it, there's a flow to it. Again, it's indicating that there is an actual human being behind this shop. Um, the one thing that I am a little bit concerned about, okay, your shop is only six months old, but I really think that this is a component of your Redbubble shop that you are leaving out in the cold. What do I mean? I'm talking about the number of followers and the number of Redbubble shops that you are following as well. This is a very important aspect of any shop, Redbubble shop owner. You should be following other Redbubble shop owners, sellers, uh, and they in turn will also follow you. And the reason being is that you want to try and get this number up. All right, you have 168 favorites, which is not bad, but it could be so much more. Remember, when you get favorites for designs on your shop, that's sending a very important message to the Redbubble algorithm that there's interest in your designs. And when there's interest in designs, Redbubble is more open to the idea of actually showing your designs to more and more potential customers in their marketing campaigns outside of Redbubble. So you definitely want to, you know, dig deep into this and maybe start following a few people, start favoriting their designs, and they in turn will receive a message that you favor them. You know, they will visit your shop, they'll favorite yours, and then, or maybe you could even get in touch with a few Redbubble sellers yourself and say, listen, hey, would you like to, you know, f f collaborate a little bit between ourselves in terms of favoriting each other's designs? It's just a little strategy to help get your designs noticed uh, and to be actually even shown more often by the Redbubble algorithm. Okay, so let's head to the top here and just see what kind of designs we've got. So we've got four collections over here, so not bad. You've already, you know, are on your way to dividing your collections to make it a little bit easier for your customers to be able to find particular designs based on the collection titles that you have here. So we've got Pets, Vacation and Adventure, Love and Kauai, Construction and Milk Kauai. So let's just click on Pets here and see what we've got. 
All right, play hockey, pet dogs. Okay, a house is not a home without kitty. Okay, so you got quite a number of text designs, which is really great. If there's a sure way of actually increasing your portfolio, that's going with text designs. Text designs are really easy to make. They don't take long to do. Just try to choose some fonts that are really bold and bombastic so that people will be able to see them in the thumbnails, particularly when people are scrolling through, you know, print on demand websites like Redbubble on their mobile phones where they have, you know, a small screen. Sometimes certain fonts, if they're too thin or if they're too small, it can be rather detrimental to, you know, the potential sales. So you want to make sure that people are actually going to be able to see the text that you are creating on your designs here. Now, this is a really good one here. Happiness is petting dogs. I love the fact that you chose a really dark black sort of heavy type font as opposed to this one over here. Me and my dog talk, well, we're not going to say that word, about you. Again, it could be a quote which people might relate to. But if you see the difference between the two types of fonts over here, this one is definitely something which is going to attract an eye a lot faster than perhaps maybe this one. Now we're seeing it on a desktop, just trying to imagine if they were a lot smaller on a mobile device. So it is something that everyone should take into consideration when you are creating text designs for your shop so that make sure that there's that visual aspect that people are going to be able to see and actually dig deep and, and be attracted to. So that's really important. Okay, so we've got some stickers here, some t-shirts, you've got some traditional sunset designs too as well. Love the sticker, I do what I want. No justice zone, you got the circular design, everything fits nicely within the circle. I absolutely love these kinds of stickers, so well done for that. Um, let's just go back here to the main uh, page on your shop and just scroll down to as well and see. Now here's something that we definitely need to be careful, okay? Um, we've got sort of like this sticker which is in a speech bubble. And it's not a bad idea. The problem is, is that it's small. The text is very difficult to read. Going back to my previous statement a few moments ago. So in this particular case, had I created a design, I would have probably chosen a more open speech bubble so that it will allow me to create, to input the quote with a bigger font, a larger size font, so that when people are seeing it, they're going to be able to read it. And if they can read it even in a thumbnail size and it actually appeals and resonates with them, then there's a greater likelihood that they are actually going to click on it to dig deeper into what it's all about and maybe perhaps even make the sale, make the purchase. So definitely something you want to keep into consideration. Maybe go back and just modify that. Love these light bulb designs with the hearts in them, different colors. I love the fact that you didn't just include one color palette, you included another one. Um, I don't know if you have others with different color palettes, but that's always a good thing too as well. Try to create maybe two or three designs, particularly if you have something like this that can't afford to have different colors in the, in the design. Choose a couple different palettes and try and see which one sells. Um, there might be somebody who doesn't like these, this particular color palette, but maybe preferred this one. And if you didn't have this one up, then perhaps maybe you might not have made the sale. So it's not a bad idea to increase the size of port your portfolio by actually including variations of a design. Don't go overboard with it because then obviously it might look like that's the only design that you have. But you know, if you create two, three, maybe even four variations of that design, effectively of any design in your shop, you're increasing the size of your portfolio. You're having more designs out there on the marketplace. And as we all know, the more designs that you have out in the marketplace, the greater the possibility of landing a sale. Obviously, if you have a thousand designs in your shop, the greater likelihood of making a sale is going to be a lot stronger than if with only 150 plus designs. So take the time when you're creating something, create a few variations. Obviously, you've got that copy function on Redbubble, which makes it really easy to upload. You don't need to change the tags. You don't need to change the title. You don't need to change the description. But you're just obviously uploading a different variation of that design. And, you know, before you know it, you can easily reach your 60 design uh, limit, daily limit, every day, simply by, you know, taking the strategy on. So, well done for that. So, really liking what I'm seeing here. You've got um, a lot of nice designs here, a lot of different niches. Obviously, we have designs pertaining to the pandemic, which hopefully is dying out. Um, I love these palm tree effects here. You've got a sticker pack here with cute potatoes. So that's actually really cool too as well. And we've got a little bit of touching over here. But again, in this particular case, not really that detrimental. It isn't as bad as some designs that I've seen in the past where it's just 
pieces of a design all over the place and I don't know if anybody would actually even buy them because it's just too much work to try and put everything together to make it look like, you know, this, the design that they're seeing on the screen. In this particular case, it's a sticker pack. You're giving four for, you know, the price of one. If somebody obviously orders it on a larger sticker size, then the chances of you making more in terms of royalties is going to be that much better. They're cute potatoes. Um, it's a great design. Really, really like it too as well. Um, let's just go through it down over here. Continue. Okay, this one over here, um, I would be very careful with. Um, if I had to compare this sticker design to the previous one that we saw, the circular one with the dog, um, the previous one, in my pers from my perspective, in my opinion, would be a lot would be a design that's more saleable than this one because of the fact that when a person buys it, they're just going to get one nice round sticker that it's easy to peel. In this particular case, the fact that you have this text design and you've got one to three different pieces, it's probably going to be a little bit complicated, a little bit more trouble than it's worth for people to have to peel each of the individual portions and stick it on whatever it is they're going to stick it to in the hopes that it's going to be nice and round and it's going to look the way that it looks here on the thumbnail. So I don't know if you're making sales on it. If you are, all the more power to you, but maybe perhaps it might be advantageous to, you know, open this design again in an image editing program, whatever it is that you use to create it, and just stick a white background or maybe stick a different colored background, you know, maybe do a blue, do a pink, do a yellow and do a green, you know, four different variations. Put them up. Again, you're increasing the size of your portfolio and you're giving your customers an option in terms of what it is or rather how they would like to purchase the sticker. And if you find that, you know, the uploaded colored versions are doing better than this one, well, then you might want to create a few other different colored variations or maybe create a color, uh, color gradient behind it. Again, you want to test the market. You don't always have to think about how you're going to reinvent the wheel and how, you know, come up with creating absolute new designs or whatnot. Sometimes it's just good enough to go into your portfolio, see what designs you have and see if you can't maybe increase and create some variations to increase the size of your portfolio. So really good um, in terms of what I'm seeing in the shop. Not too much in terms of mistakes here uh, from a newbie perspective. Again, we've got this sticker over here warning may start talking about biology, which is great. This is also another scalable design. You could scale, you could change biology to effectively any kind of discipline that you uh, you can think about. Just Google it on uh, on Google, on a search, Google search engine and see how many different types of occupations or topics you can come up with and just switch out biology with, you know, the list that Google gives you. And again, you can really increase the size of your portfolio. Again, I would caution about allowing all of these little pieces over here. Maybe stick it onto a white background, save it as a JPEG so that obviously, you know, your image editing program will give you a background straight away and then just re-upload it so it is one whole sticker as opposed to, you know, a sticker that's got tiny little pieces over here that are just flapping. It might tear when they're peeling it out. It might crease or it might fold as they're trying to stick it. Again, you always want to make sure that you're providing your customers with a great experience when they're purchasing something from you, particularly given the fact that Redbubble is really, really well known, very popular with for sticker sales. You want to make sure that they're when they purchase their sticker and they receive it in the post, they're going to be able to peel it off nicely. They're going to be able to stick it, you know, efficiently without any issues so that if they're happy with it, the likelihood of them coming to your shop again to visit and make another purchase will be a lot higher. So well done on that. Really happy with what I'm seeing. Keep it up. Um, you know, we're effectively less than four months away from the fourth quarter, the biggest, uh, the, the busiest time of the year for online sales. Keep creating designs, keep creating variations, increase the size of your portfolio. See if maybe you can't get it up to 200 or maybe even 300 by the time September rolls around so that you'll have more real estate on the Redbubble marketplace with your designs for people to see. And we wish you the best of luck. Okay, so the second shop that we're going to be reviewing today is the one that we're seeing on the screen here. And the name of the shop is Brandon Truscott, which obviously I am assuming is the name of the shop owner. And as we can see from the shop profile pic, um, this is the photo of the shop owner, which is absolutely fine. If you want to include a photo of yourself and, and name the shop after you, nothing wrong with that. I mean, whatever you think works for you, there's actually no hard and fast rule saying that you cannot do it. And obviously, maybe people will be able to remember your shop because obviously, if they ask your shop's name and you tell them, hey, the name of the shop is my name, 
and they remember your name, it'll be a lot easier for them to find you on Redbubble. Um, again, with respect to shop banners, I don't know what it is about today, but I'm really liking the shop banners that I'm seeing. This is a real impressive shop banner too as well. As you can see here, um, this shop is obviously focusing on the tennis niche, given the fact that we've got a lot of tennis related designs in the shop banner. I love the fact that you use that blue in the background, which is really helping to, you know, get your products to stand out nicely. The fact that you use a lot of black t-shirts out there with the colors of designs, it's really working nicely. I think it really gives a nice feel to customers when they're visiting that they know what it is that they're going to be looking at. And the fact that we've got over 600 designs listed here goes to tell you know potential customers, hey, there's a lot for you to dig into. And uh, hopefully there's something that you really enjoy seeing and hopefully click to make a sale. So well done for that. Uh, we started in May 2021, so roughly just about a year old. So the fact that you have 667 designs is really admirable. Um, let's see if we can't maybe get them up to a thousand before the start of the fourth quarter. Maybe again, taking the advice that I gave with the previous shop owner and creating a lot more variations of your current designs. It's a possibility. See if you can do it. Uh, if you can, I mean, it won't be the end of the world. But again, we're always striving to increase the size of our shops so that we can own more real estate. Let's take a look at the profile here. Thank you for visiting my shop. I'm a passionate tennis fan and hopeless addict. I create original designs that I hope tennis players will love and want to show off. You're welcome to reach out to me at, and then you've got the email address over there, see you on court. I like that, it's really cool. It's again, keeping to the tennis niche. Tennis, does anything else matter? Okay, so apparently for this particular seller, it doesn't seem to be the case. So well done for that. Again, what I would suggest, you've got a lot of favorites here. 5,080 favorites is really awesome considering the fact that you're really not following people and people aren't really following you. So really good. It seems that you are getting a lot of traction, a lot of exposure from customers, you know, visiting Redbubble. I hope you are making a lot of sales for that. Again, like I said with the previous seller, you've got nothing to lose by going in and following other Redbubble sellers and then, you know, favoriting their design so that obviously maybe you can increase the number of favorites to your shop as well and obviously allow, you know, Redbubble to continue helping you by obviously showing your designs to others um, in their own marketing campaigns because of the fact that there's people who are favoriting your design. Okay, let's head back to the top of your page here. Okay, so you've got a featured collection here, a Day Without Tennis, which is quite interesting. So we've got a lot of interesting text designs. A day Without Tennis probably wouldn't kill me, but why risk it? Very interesting pun on that. I actually like that. And it seems that you've got different variations of it, which is really great. Again, you've got your white text on black t-shirts and black text on white, so that you're obviously appealing to different customers depending on what kind of colored shirts they would like to buy, be it white or black. Serve it, smash it, win it, love it. I absolutely really love this particular design too as well. I love the fact that you use a different color for the banner. Again, this is something which could be really great in terms of variations. Maybe you could try and find a different color palette or two and then just do the same thing, but maybe perhaps create something more neon in terms of colors or maybe something, I don't know, more of a summery feel or a spring feel or a winter feel, depending on you know the different color palettes that are out there. Um, I'm going to leave a link to a website in the description field below uh, of a color palette website that I absolutely love. I'm not affiliated with them. It's a free color palette service to use. I found that it has actually helped me immensely with my own designs. So I'm going to leave that link uh, in the description box below so that if you would like to avail yourself of that website if you don't already know about it uh, and maybe you could actually find some interesting color palettes that maybe if not for this design, for future designs, you could create different variations for it as well. So well done for that. Tennis, eat, sleep. Um, in terms of collections, wow, you've got a ton of them, which is really great. And I love the fact that these collections obviously are pertaining to quotes or aspects of tennis so that you're allowing your customers to really dig deep down in terms of what it is that they're looking for, be it tennis addict, it's in my blood. Again, you've got a few other niches in here too as well, the coffee niche too as well, dinosaurs here, which is absolutely fine too as well. There might be some people who are looking for something pertaining to dinosaurs and I'm wondering if maybe you incorporated that with tennis, which obviously from the title here, Dinosaur Tennis, seems you have. Let's click on that and see what we've got here. So we've got two, four, six designs here. Let's just see, tennis are, all right, which is basically different variations of that. Let's take a look at your description here. Okay, so in terms of a title, cute tennis racket rainbow, 
You've got some really interesting keywords over there, so absolutely nothing wrong with that. All right, you have it on 90 plus designs. I certainly hope that you actually went in and made sure that each product, or rather the design on each product is as it should be. Um, from my perspective, in terms of these, well, in terms of the t-shirts, um, I think I would have raised it a little bit higher if I could. From the looks of it, it looks like there is a little bit space up here. Um, most people tend to appreciate a design riding as high up to the top of the shirt as possible. Um, again, if you're making sales, then feel free to ignore this bit of advice. If you're not, maybe you might want to raise it up a little bit and see if that has any effect on uh, sales down the road. I love the fact that you put a tennis racket in the mouth of the dinosaur. Um, let's take a look at your description. I've created this cute tennis racket, rainbow dinosaur design for young tennis fans and players across the globe. Treat yourself or give it as a gift to family and friends. Available on a variety of clothing and accessories. Enjoy and see you on the court. Okay, not a bad description at all. So you are obviously doing a little bit of an upsell by telling them they could treat themselves or give it as a gift to family and friends. So maybe you might paint a picture in their mind eye that maybe they shouldn't only just purchase it for them, but they could also purchase it to give as a gift to somebody else. Nothing wrong with that. Um, the one thing that I would actually probably, I don't know, suggest to you is that again, if you've watched any of my previous episodes pertaining to Redbubble shop reviews, I would always try, I try to advocate for it actually leading people to certain products in the form of an upsell. So instead of saying available on a variety of clothing and accessories, that's sort of a given. People who are coming to Redbubble are going to understand that they're going to find a design on a ton of products. But if you actually lead people to, you know, checking your design out on a particular product, um, it actually might encourage them to actually consider that which they probably weren't considering when they first came to Redbubble. Maybe they came to Redbubble in the hopes of purchasing a sticker and came across your, came across this design and the fact that maybe perhaps in your description you told them, hey, it would look great on a t-shirt or it would look great on a duvet cover, for example. Something which is, you know, one of those higher price tickets and they really appreciate seeing this particular design on a sticker. Then they check it out on a duvet cover or on a different type of t-shirt or any of the other products that Redbubble has. There might be the, a good possibility that they would like it on those products and actually click the add to cart button. So instead of making one uh, sale, you might make two. So again, you always want to try and shoot for the upsell. So that's something definitely you want to consider. Um, I will leave a link to one of the episodes where I do talk about upselling. So if you want to take a look at that and see and dig a little deeper into what it is that I'm referring to and see the style of description that I was, I'm suggest or rather I suggest in that episode, you're welcome to click on it. Um, it has helped me immensely and I think it would really help you a lot too. And when I say you, I'm not only talking about this seller, I'm talking to everybody who's watching this particular episode. Okay, so let's just go back here. And we'll go back to all collections here. Or rather we'll go to the yeah, to the front page of your shop. Okay, so you've got your designs um, shown on t-shirts predominantly here. We've got some stickers too as well. Um, this is a rather interesting um, sticker design. The fact that you put sort of like this world greatest tennis dad, sort of like a medal to the side here. Um, I don't, is it selling for you? Let me know in the comments below. It's it's not something you normally see. More often than not, you know, these medals that are sort of like given on stickers are either on the top or at the bottom, or at best, you know, on left or the right hand side in the form of rectangular sticker. Um, it's an interesting design. I'm not so sure that, I don't know, whether or not it would be something appealing to people given sort of like the unusual shape. I'm not trying to knock it. I'm just trying to put my mindset in, you know, the, the position of a customer. Again, if you're making sales for it, all the more power to you. Um, but maybe you might want to create a couple variations. Um, keep everything as it is in terms of the text and the metal, but maybe put it in different places and create it on a rectangular uh, sticker or on a circular sticker and upload those. I could really easily think of five variations from this particular design that I could then, you know, create and upload with the same keyword tags, the same title, same everything, but obviously creating a different variation in order to give my customers um, options. 
don't give them too many options because obviously if you give too many, then they won't be able to decide. And more often than not, they will say, forget it. I'm not going to bother. I can't design. But maybe if you had to include, I don't know, another three or four different designs, variations of this particular design, it might appeal to different customers. And obviously you might increase the number of sales that you make. So that's something definitely to consider. Okay, but on the whole, I'm really liking what I'm seeing over here. Again, we've got a lot of banner and text designs to as well, which is really absolutely fine. Um, be a little bit careful of very long quotes on, on, on t-shirts. Some people might like them. More often than not, they might not if it becomes too much and the text becomes a little bit small. Again, I don't know if you're making sales on that, um, but if you are, all the more power to you in that respect. Let's just take a look here. Stop being such a bogan. Come on down to the Aussie Open. Join me and my mates for a couple of, what about what are you doing here? For a couple of coldies. Okay, so obviously we can tell that this particular seller is from Australia because predominantly a lot of the designs do sort of have that Aussie slang too as well. And again, absolutely nothing wrong with that. Welcome, I'm glad that you actually um, have found my channel and asked me to review your, uh, your shop too as well. I've had the pleasure of visiting Australia early in the 2000s. It was an absolutely wonderful country. Absolutely loved it. Hope to come back again one day for another visit. But, um, you know, be a little bit careful too as well, even in terms of the spacing between the different um, the different lines, just to make sure that, you know, it isn't too too much between one and not enough of another. Um, it's not a bad design. I think that it can be improved upon a little bit, uh, even in terms of the fact that the text is really going towards the side of the t-shirt. Maybe it's a bit too stretched out over it. You have to also ask yourself when somebody is wearing it, how far out is the text going to be stretching? And will it be legible for people to read as they are you know, walking in the streets with this shirt on too as well. So definitely take that into consideration. Again, this is not to knock you or the design. All I'm doing is giving you sort of like um, a third party objective review, a bird's eye view of things that I'm picking out that might perhaps help um, to refine the design. Maybe perhaps maybe you glossed over it and maybe you might wanna create another variation and see which one does better. If this could use other to do better, hey, you know, all the more power to you. This, that's the beauty of print on demand. You know, it might appeal to some and not to another. So the best thing to do is to try create different variations, put them up and hope that, you know, you throw out a huge net to obviously reach out as many uh, people as you can with as many different opinions, as many different likes, uh, obviously for one important goal and that's to make sales. Okay, so over and above, absolutely loving what I'm seeing. We spoke about the descriptions over here too as well. I wanted to focus on descriptions and titles and just maybe get a general feel in terms of what each shop is offering today. I do tend in previous episodes to really dig deep in terms of tags. I'm not going to do that in today's episode. I think if you really wanted to learn a little bit more about proper tagging and you know how to be efficient with tagging, you could easily go and take a look at those previous episodes, episode uh, 12 and 11. I know I really dig deep into tags for those particular sellers. So I don't want to seem like I'm beating a dead horse um, and obviously going around and circles with saying the same thing over and over again. Um, so definitely take a look at those ones. Um, but overall, I'm really happy with what I'm seeing here. Congratulations to you. You have a really great shop. Wish you nothing but success. See about increasing the size of your shop if you can maybe take it up to 1,000, as I stated earlier in this review, in preparation for the fourth quarter, which is just a few months away. And I wish you nothing but success. So there you have it, everybody. We looked at two really interesting shops. Two shops that I feel have a lot of potential to do very well for themselves, not only in the here and now, but even in the long term. There's a lot of potential for growth, a lot of potential for increasing their portfolios with variations in their designs, and even indeed in terms of creating new designs too as well. If you're new to this channel, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button and turn on the bell notification icon so that you'll be informed each and every time that I upload a new video to my channel. If you enjoyed this review and you got some value out of it, please do me a favor and smash that like button. Drop me a comment down below telling me what it is that you liked or maybe perhaps what you didn't like about it. All comments are welcome. We're here to grow and we're here to learn from each other. Um, and more importantly, if you would like to have me review your shop in a future episode, then I'm going to leave instructions in the description box below. All you have to do is just take a look at those instructions and it'll tell you exactly how to go about doing it. Everybody and anybody who asks for a Redbubble shop review, 
does get one from me eventually. I don't always publish reviews um, frequently so that obviously it isn't always the same thing over and over again with my channel because of the fact that there's so much out there pertaining to print on demand and I want to bring you guys a lot of value from different aspects of the print on demand business. So I try to create a review maybe every five or six episodes, but don't worry if you do send in your link and you want a review from me, I will eventually get to it and your shop will obviously feature on my channel too as well. And hopefully the tips and advice that I will give to you will be such that it will help you take your print on demand business to the next level. But for today, that's all I've got. And as always, be safe, be well, be creative. Bye for now. Hey, if you enjoyed this video and you want to find out more ways that you can take your print-on-demand business to the next level, why don't you check out one of these two episodes I have over here. And don't forget to subscribe. Catch you in the next episode. Bye for now.